Last time we saw that defining a set as a well-defined collection of distinct objects doesn't work because the existence of the set of all sets that don't contain themselves as an element leads to a contradiction. So to patch this up, we're going to use a very specific definition of what a set is. And as a result, the thing that you get when you put all the sets together is not going to be a set. And because of this, the set of all sets that don't contain themselves as an element will not exist. To do this, we're going to use an axiomatic system. This is a list of rules written in a very precise mathematical language with some new notation that I'm going to introduce as we go along. The first axiom, axiom zero, is set existence. There exists x such that x equals x. So this backwards e symbol means there exists and everything that goes in these parentheses is the thing that the thing that we claim exists satisfy. So we're claiming that there exists some element x and this x is satisfies the condition x equals x. So now if if x were to exist at all it would definitely satisfy this condition x equals x because that's just the definition of equals. So really what's important here in this case is that there exists x. The only reason that we have this part in the parentheses after is just to maintain the structure of the language. The next axiom, axiom 1, is the axiom of extensionality. For all x, for all y, for all z, z is in x equivalent to z is in y implies x is equal to y. So this upside down a symbol means for all it behaves just like the backwards e there exists symbol um, except it means for all. So what we're saying here is that given any two sets x and y, given any set z, if z is in x is equivalent to z is in y, or put a different way, if z is in x means that z is in y and z is not in x means that z is not in y, then x and y are the same sets. Um, in other words, two sets are the same if they contain exactly the same elements. The next axiom we're going to look at is the pairing axiom. For all x and for all y, there exists z such that x is in z and y is in Z. So here we're saying you take any two sets x and y and there's some other set z such that x is in it and y is in it. So our set z is going to look something like this. It's going to have x in it, it's going to have y in it, and it might have some other things in it. Our axiom doesn't tell us whether it does or doesn't. Um, so this is what our set is going to look like. The next axiom is the union axiom. For every family of sets F, there exists a set A such that for all big Y and for all little x, Y is in f and x is in y implies that x is in a. So here this kind of curliness on this f um, is just to emphasize the fact that f is a set of sets and that we're going to do stuff with those individual sets that comprise f. So we're saying you take this f, which is a family of sets, or a set of sets, and with this f, we can make an a 
as follows. If y is in f and x is in y, then x is in a. So let's look at an example. Let's have our curly f be equal to the set containing the set containing a and the set containing b and c. So this is a set. It contains two sets. And so the set that's guaranteed to exist by this axiom is a set that contains a because this set contains the set containing a which is our big Y and that set that big Y contains a which is our little X and so X is going to be in our big A so it's going to contain a it's going to contain B for that same reason it's going to contain C as well and once again it might contain some other things there's nothing here that says that it only contains these elements all that it says is that these elements satisfying these conditions mean that they're in the set so these ellipses are kind of annoying um, but there is another axiom that's going to allow us to get rid of them.